Chloe. And today I will be addressing the issue of school uniforms and dress codes. And in this argument, I am opposing the school uniforms and, and dress codes. Okay. The introduction of school uniforms and dress codes is certainly not welcomed by everyone, including parents and students. According to Scholastic, 81% of students do not like uniforms and feel that schools do not value their individuality and freedom of choice when it comes to wearing their own clothing. Having school uniforms and dress clothes not only violate students' right to freedom of expression, but are a burden to financially struggling families. So, the First Amendment of the Constitution guarantees the freedom of expression and prohibits any law against it. School dress codes and uniforms obviously violate this right. Dressing in one's own clothes is a common way that students are able to express themselves as individuals. Now, to whom are the dress codes and uniforms mostly targeted against? Well, they're directed mostly against girls. Schools seem to be on the side of the male gender and does not teach self-responsibility to the male population. For example, they claim that girls and their shorts that are above their knees and tops that expose their collarbones and their shoulders are distracting boys from their education and therefore should be banned from all schools. For example, there was an incident in Utah where a, involving a girl's winter formal dress. It was, it was like saying, um, oh no, her shoulders are showing. She has committed a sin. She's going to be a hooker when she grows up. And you may laugh and smile at this, but that is truly how most female victims feel towards this. And therefore, that Utah team was forced to wear a long coat throughout the entire dance. Now, one may argue that uniforms are for the welfare and the safety of the students. But schools wouldn't have to be concerned about sexual harassment if men were able to control themselves. Instead of teaching women... Women shouldn't have to live life constantly being warned not to walk in the streets alone at night because women are not sex objects. Constantly being in fear of harassers is not a way women should live life. Enforcing stress codes and uniforms only low-key support and encourages the harassers, when instead they should be being taught not to treat or play other people like toys. And this goes for women victimizing men as well. The stress of following dress codes and wearing the same uniform distracts students from receiving a proper education. A role of a student is to learn. If they're not able to do so in what they feel is not a safe and comfortable environment, then that school would have been nothing but an ultimate failure. Second, uniforms are a burden to financially struggling families. Uniforms can be quite expensive, um, especially if there are multiple children in a family. Studies show that American parents spend an average of about $129.20 per kid each school year buying clothes, not including other supplies. But including other school supplies, it totals to an average of, of about $246.10. School shopping trips help make fall the second biggest consumer spending season of the year, only behind the winter holidays. In conclusion, schools should respect students' choices of clothing and not restrict them to one uniform, which not only places all students on the same plane and limits their boundaries of creativity and imagination, but can also be a financial burden.